day. And uh, as I was setting up, I was like, I, don't, I haven't done this in a while <laughs> for some, for whatever reason. Um, I missed two Fridays in a row because of the program I'm in. And I think I missed the one before that. I might've been in the attic at that point in Seattle. So it feels like I haven't been here for a little while. And so, um, yeah, I was pulling out all my stuff thinking, oh, I just, it, I'm really looking forward to getting painty today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start with a, um, flip through because I haven't really done that. I've, I pulled out my COVID journal. This is the journal I started at the beginning of COVID when I first started, uh, art journaling for you guys, um, lives and these lives. And so, um, I'll give you, I'm going to give you a, a little flip through of what I did. Um, and it's interesting because you can kind of see how things morphed. Um, as I went along and I can't tell if it's the camera that's off. Anyway, so you can see my colors changed a lot. I was really using the ice. I got my squirrels. I actually pulled my squirrel, squirrels, squirrel, um, uh, stencil out for today. And I know. so just, you know, this is, Sometimes I went back and used them as examples for leveling up and stuff like that. For me, this is a little stark. I'd probably come in and do some more mitigating. Maybe I'll do that as a live next week. Um, <laughs> this is when I was talking about making my own stencils. There's a lot going on in the world at that point, if you remember. This is still one of my favorite uh spreads the contrast and the imagery and the movement and it just feels very um, energetic inspiring this might have been around the holidays these two. Oh, a blank page i should the reason this is blank is because i need to gesso this if you don't gesso it it does let's see where's that page. it does this i don't know if you can see the big crinkle in there but if you do gesso it then what happens is that it shrinks but you get a nice flat surface. I, can you see how this is smaller? Because it shrank. So what I do when I gesso these um, burlap pages, and this is a Dino Wakely mixed media journal. It has all these different pages in it. It's got watercolor paper, craft paper, burlap, that sort of thing. But um, when I have a page like this, I come in and I uh, gesso both sides so that it dries evenly, so shrinks on either side. just realized I wasn't looking at my screen here. So um, that's why I have these blank pages, because I still need to do that. It takes a few days or a few hours for it to dry. Here's one I did just so ahead of time. Ooh, again, I like this. You know what it is? It's this, it's this color. I gotta remember how much I love this color. Ooh, there it is again. Bam, in your eyes. And then again with the burlap, so I just skipped it because it wasn't ready. I was really into the stencil for a little while with the stripes. Always into chevrons. Look like I this is, looks like it's brayered on rather than scraped. Whew. Repetition. This one does not feel finished to me, but boy, I went to the pink to the pink side on that one. <laughs> Hi Laura, thanks for joining me this morning. Just on a little flip through. Um this was around the time when I was getting into the idea of sanding down my work. I, it didn't, doesn't really appeal to me in the in my journal like this. but And this is a piece of burlap that I had pre-gessoed again, avoiding that wrinkly bit. This is when those um, the Prima rub-ons first came out, and I was really excited about them because they're super fun. And then, let's see, more... Oh, that is unfinished. And then here, I did just sew this one ahead of time, so I'm just going to go ahead and work on this side today. And that means, oh, let's see if I can reach it. I'm just going to prep by putting down some wax paper. Um, yeah, you can buy silicone mats and things like that to um, protect your space as well. But I use wax paper just because it's, it's easy. And then you get some fun, <laughs> fun stuff happens with your wax paper and you can use it later. Okay. All right, it doesn't completely protect your space, so you do have to know that. Um, okay, so 
This is bleed through from the other side because this is that handmade watercolor paper that she has. She actually sells this in bulk too if you're interested in that. And I did bring out my squirrel bowls. Now, I had a very satisfying few minutes yesterday where I pulled off the old paint. And I don't know if you can see how thick that is. That's how compromised I, this, uh, this had gotten. And look how fun that is. You've got the colors coming through on the back side, as well as the texture from the front side. So I'm going to use this in a project because, of course, of course I am. All right. What are we going to start with in here? I don't know. I pulled all these colors. Yesterday I had a fun time playing with the Dina Wakely um, colors, these, these ones. They really just all work together really beautifully. So maybe, I don't know. I also have all my, I have my butters and some of my handcrafted paste. There was an idea at one point that I was going to do my own line of um, texture paste and then everyone and their dog came out with texture paste and I was like, never mind. <laughs> Too much work. So, what am I going to start with? Yeah, let's, let's start with this. Now, some of these, it has been long enough that some of these might not even be pasty anymore. They might be uh, crunchy and cruddy and not usable. So, uh, last night in my Dina Wakely class, we were talking about um, using uh, clear mediums to seal color in, down. And, you know, uh, Dina Wakely's sprays are, what's the word, are um, acrylic. So when they dry, they dry permanently, so they don't interact with the other layers. And I was just talking about how fun it is sometimes to seal layers in underneath clear so you can see them. And um, that works with, you know, with her sprays because they, they don't melt up through your mediums when you put them down. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I am sure that I will demonstrate it today because it is inevitable that it happens. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is wax paper that's still stuck on my page from when I... That's funny. Hmm. Oh, it's like, it's like a sunburn peeling. Oh no, am I going to be able to handle that? I don't know. Covering off my pages. I, you know, I can, I can handle a big mess. All right, I'm not going to freak out about it. I'm not. No, you're not. Mm -mm. Don't do it in here. Do not freak out about it. <laughs> do not. Do not freak out about it. Okay. Um, I indulged in brand new packets of ice today. This is uh, Seth Apter's um, Texture Mediums. It's translucent, which is fantastic. So when you put it down... She says optimistically. Uh, when you put it down, it, depending on how thin you spread it, it can, um, it changes color. So it gets very yellow when it's thinner, but you can see through it regardless, pretty well regardless. And uh, it creates these windows, which are fun to play with. And this is a Dina Wakely stencil. Because I love Dina Wakely. Squidge one more. And you can see it's interacting with the texture I already put down a little bit. That's fun. So I intentionally chose some stencils today that have big open spaces on purpose. So far, these are all acrylics that I've put down. So when I spray a medium on them, it's going to resist those mediums, which will create some nice interactions as well. Don't forget to cap your ice, otherwise it gets stuck, clogged up. It'll clog if you don't. All right, so let's prove. Here is an eye zinc. So this is an Aladine, it's orange pastel. So Aladine is the company, iZinc is their um, product. Uh, Seth Apter has his own iZinc products. Um, so Seth Apter is part of the brand. 
He has new colors too, which I need to get in. New ice, all that. I need to get on it. I kind of like this, um, this ink in the background leaking up through the page. Kind of cool. down some of this sage one thing about these journals is that they are large and so you know it kind of invites making some grand statements sometimes because otherwise you're just not going to cover it all <laughs> um, and braying is a great way to cover a big space doesn't it? <laughs> uh, this is my uh, the, uh, Dina Wakely Sage color. It's very um, sort of greeny gray. Very soothing color actually. I love it. Seth Afters. The eyes ink um, has, what's it called, what, mecca in it, so it's glittery. Seth's does not. It's just color. <laughs> the singing teacher next door is playing, it sounds like the Jurassic Park theme song. <laughs> Very nostalgic for some reason. So this is a great way to get past uh, the blank page. If you are suffering from blank page syndrome, which is, ah, I don't know what to do, and so you don't do anything, spray inks, solve that instantly. Happy Friday, yes. I did an unusual thing this morning and I fell back to sleep after my daughter left for school, which I never do. I don't take naps because they're dangerous. And I slept hard for an hour and a half. Unbelievable. I had very, 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 very vivid dreams. The kind of dreams that you think are real until you wake up. Those scorbles have disappeared, so let me bring them back. I actually really like how that purple is interacting with this palette. Kind of fun. 
I'm often not very intentional with my palettes, but this one, it's feeling good to, to have these sort of neutral tones working with each other. So now you're going to see that thing that happens when you have water soluble mediums down and you put something wet on top of it, which is that they contaminate each other. And that's fun. That's part of what I like about it. <clears throat> but you can see that the color, you know, it, it's morphing the color a little bit. Yeah. I don't know why that's not in. That looks very yellow in the video. It's not as yellow on the page as that looks, but it's very yellow. So I'm going to brayer some more color on. This is, um, last night we were talking about different consistencies. This is a medium body uh, acrylic, uh, medium to soft, so it's fairly squishy. And um, like if you were to put it through a stencil, it wouldn't hold its shape very well, would squeeze into the stencil more than a texture paste. Heavy body acrylics are a little more like hand lotion. Um, heavy modeling, molding paste are more like toothpaste. Uh, these texture paste from Seth are uh, toothpaste-y, meaning that when you squeeze them out, they keep their shape until you manipulate them. Okay, let's see if this works. This is, um, oh, it's working. This is uh, Dina Wakely's, one of her sprays. Her sprays are acrylic, and so once they dry, they will be permanent. They're also very opaque. I don't know if you can see how it is literally um, uh, obscuring the color underneath it. Fun. But also, I do have some water-soluble uh, mediums on here, so it is um, what's the word? So they're interacting. The color is going to change. Hi, Jill. Thanks for joining us. See? See? <laughs> Kendall's not here anymore. So sad. You can already see how very, very different all of this looks to my previous pages. Much more subtle.
think I'm going to come back and do this again with my ice. So here's my ice. This is the um, Greenland color. And see, here's what I mean about toothpaste. Do you see how when you squeeze it out, it stays the shape that it is until you change it? And again, it's going to come, it's going to go down, it's going to seal down, seal the colors underneath it. That was not dry, so it squished that around quite a bit. It's also picking up some of the water solubleness. back in. I like what it did earlier. Ooh, and now it has some texture to interact with. I don't know if you can see what's happening there. This is where I like get excited because if you can see what's happening is that all of these different layers of texture are interacting with what I just put down and some of it's going to resist and some of it's going to absorb the tone. So I get this, these fun moments. Switch gears here. I'm gonna put this down. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna use my regular gel medium, which is ooh, not looking so hot, to be honest. Okay. We'll see how this works. So this is gonna create clear windows. Through. That you can see through and it's also I'm picking up and smearing stuff that was on the page that wasn't dry because of course I am put your caps on otherwise your gel medium goes funky Now you can see how it's opaque until it dries on this one. That's kind of nice to be able to see that. But it should dry clear. That's what you're going for.
So now, look, I see right here, these are the moments that I live for with this stuff. I love that. I love what happens when that happens. I love what's happening when that happens. Maybe this is what All right, I'm gonna use a Distress Oxide very intentionally because I want um, something opaque. Oh, it's not even open. Bummer. We were complaining last night again about how they package these things so that you can't open them. <sighs> of course, while I'm sitting here, 14 things just popped into my head that I have to remember to do. I have to respond to my insurance agent. I need to send George the login. I have to arrange tuition payment for my son. That's what happens when you step back from your work. Oh, interesting. Look how bright that is when it goes down. But then look what it's doing while it interacts with what's on the page. And one thing I can do is if something's too bright in one spot, I can come in and water it down and then spread it around a little bit with the, the uh, heat gun. And then I get kind of interesting things that happen. It's called flooding when you do that. You create pools that you chase around your texture. When you flood your piece, that texture has an opportunity to rise up through the color that you just put down. It's kind of fun. where I'm going to do something that I love to do when things have gotten a little muddy and I want to pull color back up um, or the texture back up and so I'm going to um, squeeze out a little of this red which I haven't used yet and I'm going to use my brayer to pick it up and I'm going to get it thin on my brayer first so it's not splotchy and you know having a little jelly plate next to you sometimes can be a great way to do that and I'm just going to skim it over the top. I don't know if you can see how it pulls out some of that texture by because it's only going to hit the top bits of that texture. And so it can be a great way to pull back, I call it clawing back texture through all of those layers of colors um, if you've lost it due to adding so many layers already. I don't know if you can see what happened there, if that worked. I don't I hope that's not as blurry as it's showing that it is on, on my computer. There's some cool stuff going on on this page, and I'd like you all to be able to see it. Are you feeling in here? I feel like I want to bring in some more of this apricot. It's a very light color. So it's going to lighten up this a little bit. A little bit. Not a lot of it. A little bit. It's nice, you know, these clog really easily, so it's nice when you have one that isn't clogged and it works beautifully like that, because that's what, that was gorgeous, the way that one did. It's the way it's supposed to work. So the key to that is to wipe the nozzle when you're done with it and to put the lid back on, which is hard, that's hard for me to remember, because <laughs> I'm lazy.
Pumpkin Fresh Fuchsia Package. Uh, so Candace, are you referring to um, the like dye and stencil and stamp combination that they put out in Pink Fresh Studios? Ooh, that doesn't mean the flower's going out. Um, because I have got some stuff on order from them, but I'm not sure. Uh, I have to go back and look because I just order it when they say when it's new and then I wait until it shows up and I don't have a lot of control over that sometimes. All right, so I'm just going to do the same thing as I did with the red with this black and see if I can't bring a little contrast into this page because it's feeling a little monotone. I don't use black a lot in my spreads, so get some grunge in there. You know what I'm going to do at this point? I'm going to scrape on some gold. The washi tape. Okay, yes. So I will look and see what I have on order. Um, and when you come in, we can maybe uh, make sure I've got the elements that you want. If you come in. Next time you come in, how's that? So this is the Sizzix acrylic paint. They're gold, which I'm really enjoying. Just put a nice squidge across my piece. I was wondering where that splodge went. <laughs> good thing I didn't paint on my clothes. Or not good thing. I mean, I don't mind getting paint on my clothes, but it's not like it gets on my clothes in a way that looks cool and like I'm a painter. It gets on my clothes like I've spilled coffee on myself and didn't clean it off. Or that I peed my pants. So, I, uh... If I were the kind of person that has the kind of lucky, lucky paint spills that it makes me look like a hipster, fine, but <laughs> I'm not. didn't go top to bottom here on this one. I let it uh, stay white at the top, kind of like this band feeling that I've got going on here. And um, I'm just going to do a couple more layers, I think, of brayering. Bring in some, a little more of the red because that kind of disappeared. And then a teeny bit more of the black because I actually like what that did earlier. Now it sort of brought in a little contrast is what I like. I liked about that. But I like the I like the gold too. I love I love the sheen gold brings to a piece. Ooh, that's cool. Oh, I like that. I like that contrast, especially against the gold. I love how it's pulling that out. Popping it. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, I just, this little corner is bothering me. Smudgy. I'm going to smudge some more gold on, I think, because, because I can. Moved 
on to the National Anthem next door. That is awesome. All right. So I've got some gold. Lighting up that corner. Got a little green going on here and there. Got some black in there for some contrast. Remember I have some surprise texture in there with that wax paper that was stuck to the page. Yeah. So a little different mood from my earlier work. Um, if you missed the, the flip through, I flipped through um, in the beginning and showed everybody things I'd done two years ago now. And uh, yeah, and this is a little different, but I love it. Okay, so that we changed to this camera and um, that's that's art journaling for today uh, I have the hands to prove it and um, I hope that it inspires you to get a little painty um, everything that I used to do I sell here in the store including the journal and the brayer and the spray bottle if there's anything you're wondering about come on in and we'll, I'll show you what it is and I hope to see you here in the next couple days um, our hours have changed we're now open till 6 um, 12 to 6 every day that we're open, Tuesday through Saturday. Yes. Yes. So, see you here. Bye, everybody.